Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of the Clorox company, ticker symbol CLX. We're looking at Clorox today because they're a dividend aristocrat. So dividend aristocrats are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 25 years. In the case of Clorox, they've consecutively increased their dividend for each of the past 46 years, meaning that they are only four years away from potentially becoming a dividend king. So if they're able to maintain their dividend increases going forward over the next four years, they would join the likes of businesses such as Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, and Johnson & Johnson, being in a select group of some of the most elite companies in the world. We're looking at Clorox today to get an understanding of their financial fundamentals to try to determine whether or not Clorox has what it takes to be a future dividend king. So right now Clorox is paying out a 3.2% dividend yield, which is about double the yield of that of an S&P 500 ETF. Clorox is currently trading for $144.81 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is down 17%. Over five years, their stock price is almost flat. They're down only 2.5%. Clorox was a pandemic darling. In August of 2020, the business hit its all-time high at $236 per share. Since then, their stock price is down by more than $90. Over 10 years, however, Clorox is compounding at a rate of 7% annually, so their stock price has just about doubled over this period. And going back prior to the global financial crisis over the last nearly 18 years, Clorox has compounded at a rate of only 5% annually. Keep in mind that their average dividend yield over this period would be in addition to this compounded annual return. So Clorox is currently trading $20 above their 52-week low, which is down more than $40 from their 52-week high. They do have some short interest around the business. A little over 5% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and they have about an $18 billion market cap. So Clorox is a moderately large business. For additional background about the company, with a history dating back more than 100 years, Clorox now plays in a variety of categories across the consumer product space, including cleaning supplies, laundry care, trash bags, cat litter, charcoal, food dressings, water filtration products, and natural personal care products. Beyond its namesake brand, the firm's portfolio includes Liqua Plumber, Pine Sol, SOS, Tylex, Kingsford, Fresh Step, Glad, Hidden Valley, Casey Masterpiece, Brita, and Burt's Bees. Just shy of 85% of Clorox's sales come from the United States. The Clorox company was founded in 1913 and is headquartered in Oakland, California. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Clorox based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress, and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Clorox had very high returns on capital in four of these five years coming in at above 30%. Their returns on capital dipped somewhat, but we're still well above average in 2022. And over over their last 12 months, Clorox is earning about 17.5% returns on capital. So while again, their fiscal 2022 performance and their last 12 months of performance are down from where their returns on capital have been historically, averaged out, Clorox is still earning a 30% average return on capital in these last five fiscal years. That's more than four times better than that of a typical business, and that's twice that benchmark we're looking for. Even with their returns on capital dropping, they're still above that benchmark. So this is a check to start things off here for Clorox on metric number one. Then next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. So over this time, Clorox's revenues are up only 15%. They peaked in 2021 and they've been down since then. Their earnings are down by 50% over this period as their total operating expenses have increased and their free cash flows are also down by about 13% over their last 12 months from where they were in 2018. So Clorox has seen their revenues increase while their overall profitability is down. So both their gross margins and their operating margins have declined over this period as well. So this is an X here on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Clorox on a per share basis. 
So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. Again, in the previous metric, we learned that their earnings are down by 50% over this period. However, earnings are just the numerator in this earnings per share equation. So we also want to take a look at what the denominator has done, whether or not Clorox has increased their shares outstanding or decreased them by buying back shares. Likely a good sign for long-term shareholders in the business, Clorox has repurchased around 6% of their shares outstanding over the last five years. So this is important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business buys back stock by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which is ultimately going to increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the business is making a partial acquisition of itself. And just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. So this means that we ideally want businesses buying back their shares only if they're trading for below their intrinsic value. And it's an attractive use of their capital relative to some of their other opportunities. Even with these share buybacks, Clorox's earnings are down at a rate that outpaces these. And so their earnings per share have declined by close to about 40% over this period. So this is another X here on metric number three. Next up, metric number four is gonna be very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, their free cash flows are down by 13% over this period. And with only 6% buybacks, their free cash flow declines are outpacing their buybacks. And so this is another X on metric number four. After starting off with strong average returns on capital, through our first four metrics, Clorox only has one check and three Xs. Then next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So we don't wanna be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are gonna be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that Clorox has produced over the last five years. So Clorox ended their fiscal 2022 with about $3 billion worth of net debt. Since then, they've paid this down slightly and they have about $2.9 billion of net debt currently. And over these last five years, Clorox has brought in about $4.3 billion of free cash flow. So that's more than enough free cash flow on a historical basis here to be able to support this debt load. Even with their last 12 months of free cash flow coming in at around $680 million of free cash flow, that would still just be enough to be able to support these debt loads if we would extrapolate that out into the future over the next five years. And so this this is a check here on metric number five. As while it is toward the high end, it does look like the business is using a reasonable amount of debt based off of the free cash flows that they're bringing in. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us another reason to be interested in Clorox. We're using their total enterprise value here because it's gonna take into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's gonna give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Clorox were a private company. So right now, Clorox has about a $21 billion total enterprise value, and we learned that over the last five years, Clorox has brought in about $4.3 billion worth of free cash flow, which means that in an average year, Clorox is earning about $870 million worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $870 million of their average free cash flow by their $21 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 4% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So while that is slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury, that's below that 5% benchmark we're ideally looking for for a potential risk premium. And so this is an X here on metric number six. Worth being aware of as well is that as we learned in the previous metric, their free cash flows are down somewhat from where they've been at historically over this period. Over their last 12 months, Clorox has earned $680 million worth of free cash flow. And so to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $680 million of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $21 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us about a 3.2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield right now. That would both be below that 5% risk premium we're ideally looking for and below the yield of the 10-year treasury currently as as well. So on both an average and a current basis, this is an X here on metric number six. However, just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to throw this business out in its entirety. This is just one of our six metrics and this analysis is meant to be taken in holistically. Even though these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. Then as a bonus here, we're taking a look at Clorox's dividend profile. Again, Clorox is a dividend aristocrat. They paid out consecutively increasing dividends for each of the past 46 years, and they currently have a 3.2% dividend yield, which is about double the yield of that of an S&P 500 ETF right now. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing either dividend yield or dividend track record. So it's important to stop and understand 
understand the fundamentals of a business and to consider whether that business's dividends are well supported by their free cash flows or their earnings depending on the type of business. So for Clorox, we want their dividends to be well supported by their free cash flows. And in four of these past five years, that was the case. Clorox was easily able to support their dividends with their free cash flows. However, over their most recent fiscal year in 2022 and over their last 12 months, this does not seem like it's been the case for the business as Clorox is paying out more in dividends per share than they're bringing in in free cash flows. So in order to be able to support this dividend now and into the future, the business is either going to need its free cash flows to get back to where they have been at historically over this period, or they would have to fund a growing dividend through some other means through some sort of capital raise. So this isn't necessarily a great position for the business to be in. And if you're potentially interested in Clorox for its abilities to pay out dividends, then just like with any other business, you would really want to understand what the future free cash flows of this business would look like. It does look like their dividend would be at potential risk here, especially if they're not able to get a rebound in their cash flows going forward. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Clorox, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last five years. So again, this is not where their current free cash flows are at. Their current free cash flows would have to rebound by quite a bit to get back to where their averages were at. But using historical growth assumptions for how the business has been able to grow their average free cash flows dating back all the way till 1990. So these are historical growth assumptions that you need to do your own homework on to determine whether or not these are going to be potentially accurate or applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for Clorox over the next 20 years. So if we assume a growth stage over the next 10 years where Clorox grows their average free cash flows at a rate of just under 9% annually, then we use a terminal stage for the next 10 years out after that where this growth rate is cut in half and they grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 4.5% annually. If we are potentially seeking a 10% rate of return for the business, then it looks like a fair value for Clorox would be around $111 per share. This would be more than $33 from below what their current stock price is at. And so there are a couple of caveats here. One is that this discount rate would be including their dividend payouts. So we would not be doubly counting their dividends here. So 3.2% of this 10% rate of return would be included from their dividends. Two, there are a number of reasons why this might not be an accurate prediction for the future. So please be mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decisions, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. Using these same historical growth assumptions with these same caveats, caveats. From today's valuations, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 7% rate of return going forward for Clorox. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our recap for the business, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of Clorox's business, especially the qualitative aspects around potential key points for either a long or a short thesis of the business? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business, number one, by building out its international wipe supply chain, Clorox could realize more profitable growth abroad longer term. Two, it's hypothesized that natural margin accretion should manifest as the firm brings more manufacturing in-house from just 50% of its offerings back to the 80% maintained historically versus the utilization of higher cost co-manufacturers employed during the pandemic. And three, the rising globalization of travel and corresponding illnesses like COVID-19 could bolster demand for disinfectant offerings, aiding cleaning sales, which are about one third of Clorox's base over the near to mid term. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the business, number one, private label penetration tends to be quite significant in categories where Clorox competes like bleach, charcoal, and trash bags, and volume could be hindered if consumers trade down to lower priced fare. Number two, higher costs such as commodities, logistics, manufacturing, and labor stand to stifle margins for the next several quarters and will likely ebb and flow over time. And number three, before the coronavirus outbreak, promotional spending had persisted across Clorox's categories, most recently bags and wraps, and it's thought that these competitive headwinds could resume against a bleak economic backdrop. So hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the qualitative aspects of a potential long or potential short thesis for the business. Now it's time for a wrap up. So in summary, Clorox only checks the box on two out of our six metrics today. They're earning average returns on capital of about 30%. However, those returns have come down into the mid-teens over their last 12 months and over their last fiscal year. While the business has grown revenues, their earnings and their free cash flows are down over the last five years, and their gross margins and their operating margins are down as well. Then even though they bought back 6% of their shares over the last five years, their per share metrics are down. It does look like even with their recent declines in free cash flows that the business would be able to support 
support the amount of debt that they have employed. However, on both a current and an average basis of their free cash flows compared to their enterprise value yield, it does not look like those are giving us the potential risk premium we'd ideally be seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Then looking at their dividend profile, while Clorox is a contender to be a future dividend king, and they do have a dividend yield that's about twice as good as that of a yield of an S&P 500 ETF, it does look like their dividend could be in potential trouble if the company is not able to get their free cash flows back on track to where they have been at historically. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Clorox, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions for the business, then it looks like from today's valuations, you could reasonably expect about a 7% rate of return going forward for Clorox. Keep in mind that this 7% would be including their 3.2% dividend yield, so it looks like their stock price would only be compounding at a rate of about 4% going forward. And be mindful that there are a number of reasons why this might not be potentially accurate for the business. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Clorox. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you ultimately want to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand its essence and understand what's important and what's not important for that company going forward. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Clorox, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the business will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of the Clorox company, ticker symbol CLX. Again, we were looking at the business because they're almost a dividend king and because they've been a dividend aristocrat and have consecutively increased their dividend payouts for 46 years. So this is continuing on with our trend of looking at dividend aristocrats. So if you learned something or if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Clorox with me and have a great day.